Engineering is not easy, but what if I told you that it was extra hard for you because of some bad habits that you didn't even know that you had? Well, over the last six years as I've gone through university and began working as a structural engineer, I've picked up on several bad habits that we as engineers can fall victim to, and unfortunately, some of these bad habits are the ones that make the biggest difference to your progression. Although the good news is, is that once you become aware of these habits and actively make a change in how you approach your engineering development, very quickly you can start to see improvement. And so in this video, I wanna go over six of these bad habits and share with you some of the changes you should make. All right, so the first habit you need to stop is always trusting the software. What I mean by this is that when you build a model or use some sort of design software, you shouldn't just blindly trust the result and believe that whatever the program is telling you is correct. One common thread between every design program, regardless of whether you're designing a complex multi-story building or just a simple steel beam, is that if you put rubbish in, you'll get rubbish out. And what I mean by this is that if you input things like the restraints, the member properties, or even the loads wrongly, you're gonna get completely different results from what you should be. For example, recently I was designing a truss and I decided to model this truss in Spacecast so I could get the axial forces and it wasn't until I was analyzing my results that I realized I put in the wrong node restraints. This simple error meant that the bottom quarter of my truss was barely picking up any load and if I had just run the design module and gone with the members the program suggested, the bottom quarter of my truss would have been very undersized and definitely would have failed in reality. This is just one example of how a little mistake like this can slip through but errors like this happen all the time and it's on you to make sure that you pick up on them. Now, there's a bunch of different ways you can go about validating your results depending on what sort of analysis you're doing, but three of the most common ways that I do it is one, through hand checks or using an Excel spreadsheet, two, modeling something similar in a different program, or three, by doing a thorough review of things like the deflected shape and the bending moment diagrams. There's no one way that's particularly better than another, so just have a think about what you're doing and what's gonna be the easiest for you. Okay, and the next habit you need to avoid is not asking for feedback. When you're a student, you're constantly receiving feedback. You get feedback through the results of your assignments and your exams, and you also get it when you're in class through asking questions and working through example problems. With all this guidance and reassurance, it's pretty easy to gauge how you're performing. Although, when you start working as an intern or after you graduate, you never get this sort of feedback from your colleagues unless you ask for it. Now, there's two different ways that I've found you can get feedback from your seniors, and number one is through full design reviews, and two is through asking concept questions. Full design reviews are pretty straightforward, and this is where I'll send my completed design to a senior for review. They'll mark up any questions or comments they have. I'll get it back and I'll go through and address each of their comments. On the other hand, concept questions are where I'll go up to a senior engineer during the design stage and make sure that my understanding of the concept or the problem I'm trying to solve is correct or even just reasonable. Personally, I get a lot of value out of the feedback I receive through asking concept questions because often I can go and apply what I've just learned immediately, but full design reviews are still really helpful too. All right, and the next habit you need to avoid is only designing the same type of structures. As a young engineer, I think it's really important to get a range of different experiences, and if you niche down too soon, you're going to pigeonhole yourself and end up missing out on a lot of different opportunities because you're not well-rounded. It's obviously a lot easier to only have to work with one type of material or structure type, but in the long run, being so specific early in your career is really going to limit your ability to be able to work anywhere. In saying that though, later on in your career, if you do do want to become a specialist in one particular area, that's not such a bad idea because there are a lot of small specialist companies that make a lot of money doing this, but I wouldn't recommend it so early on. This is actually one of the main reasons I decided to leave my first graduate job because I wasn't getting a good range of experience, and I can say almost nine months later now into my new job, I definitely made the right choice. So for anyone out there who's thinking about applying to internships or graduate roles, what type of project you'll get to work on is definitely something that I would suggest you put at the top of your priority list. Okay, and next is not teaching others. Even after graduating university, it's pretty common to feel like you still don't know anything and that you're the one who's supposed to be doing all the learning. But even if you do have heaps of learning to go, you can't forget how far you've already come and let that stop you from sharing what you do know. So when someone comes by and asks you a question, really try and give them the time of day and go into detail with your explanation. Personally, I think one of the best ways to test if you really understand something is to try and teach it because often when you try and teach something, someone, whatever you don't understand becomes quite obvious, and more often than not, you learn something too. As a student, I'm sure you've experienced the benefit of either explaining something or having something explained to you by a friend, and the same exchange is just as valuable when you start working, so don't stop doing it after university. Okay, and the next habit you need to stop is constantly assuming it's gonna be okay. 
What I mean by this is that when you're doing design work, don't skip over every basic calculation and check and actually do the calcs. Now, I totally understand that there isn't enough time to do design checks on every little thing that you design and that for some things you just know from your experience and your engineering judgment that it's not critical and that what you've designed is gonna be okay. But consistently doing this time and time again won't give you the repetition that you need to actually maintain the skill of doing the hand calculation process so that when it does become critical, you fully have to relearn the calculation process all over again. To try and combat this, when I'm doing design work at least once a day, I'll just pick one thing and I'll just work through the hand calculation process. Now, when I am just picking to do one design calculation by hand, it doesn't mean that I'm writing pages and pages of hand calculations, but it may just be that I'm doing one steel connection design by hand, which is maybe just one page long at best. Personally, I think this little bit of extra effort does help me maintain a lot more of my technical skills. And while it does take more time in the moment, I do think that it saves me time overall because I'm a lot more familiar with how things are done. All right, and number six is not continuing your education. Many students think that when they finish university, that's it, they've learned everything and they're ready to start working. And while technically you are now qualified to start working, you definitely haven't learned everything. You still have lots to learn. Personally, I think I thought this way too when I was in my first and second year of uni. And the further I went along in my degree, the more I started to hear things along the lines of, yeah, no, uni doesn't teach you anything. You learn it all once you start working. And now that I've been working for almost two years, I can definitely see where the people who were saying this were coming from. And while I personally wouldn't take it to that extreme and say that uni doesn't teach you anything because it definitely does, I would say that in the last two years working, I learned just as much and if not more than I did in the last four while I was at university. So with that being said, make sure that you treat the information that you're learning at work the same way that you would if you were studying it. Make sure that you're noting it down and make sure that you're practicing it. The way I like to do this now is to note things down either on OneNote on my computer or on Note ability on my iPad and for things like calculation examples or textbooks I like to save these on a folder on my desktop. A lot of the information that I note down these days is more practical stuff that I use in my day-to-day -day work but as I relearn some of the more technical things from uni I do also note those things down here too. Anyways I hope that you learned something from this video and if you did enjoy it you might like this video here where I take you through another eight habits that are helping me to become a better engineer or that video there where I take you through a full day in my life as a structural engineer. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.